finished doing my exam on the computer than I did on paper. I'm constantly on my phone, so I think, yeah, I'd much prefer on computer. I'd rather do the exam on the computer rather than on paper because my handwriting is terrible. I'd recommend the e assessment to any, to any other pupil. Welcome again back here at Pontypridd High School Construction Department. I'm going to talk you through a little uh, demonstration for Unit 1, Health, Safety and Security in Construction. Uh, it's on the e-assessment programme, uh, where all schools would access this on a set date uh, in June every year. But through my experience, and I've been delivering construction here for many years, it's very, very positive for the students. They get engaged quite quickly and this is the way that they like to learn. The way this exam was set up was to use mobile phones, laptops, iPads, etc. Students are engaged with the technology that they are familiar with. The exam is set up with short answers and then as we increase, we get to the last question, which is question number 12, which gives us a risk assessment which will be out on site, but it's very important we identify hazards, risks, and how we control the measures within them areas. That's what gains you the most marks. So as you follow the step-by-step -step guides through, each one will be linked to a real site situation. It opens up the document in the same way if you had a paper examination, and they would guide you through page by page. Right, this will be the, the first page uh, when, you, when you sit the exam uh, examination in the gym on a set date. This is what you'll see when you log in. Then there's a key code along the top. You'll have a unique key code which will be entered into the system. Once that is entered into the system, you would then press the OK button. That will take you through then to the candidates re uh, ref references and confirm all your details. So you would look uh, to ensure that this you would write date the birth, your candidate reference number is in there. When you're happy with that, the gender, female and male and, and so on. Then you would press the confirm button. This will bring you up then to the instructions of the candidate. This is on any paper-based exercises or any exams that you actually do. It tells you what the questions of the paper uh, what they based on. You're required to answer all the questions. So this is just talking you through it. This is instructions for you as a candidate. Once you've read it and you're happy, you go down at the bottom right hand corner there where it says start exam. Press the start exam button. This comes up then as an introduction, it's Jem Jones and Jones Design and Build, was set up three years ago and is now a very successful business. This is just the start before you go on to question one. Question number one, uh, what it says here is there's nothing to indicate what type of fire extinguisher this is, the most likely types of the fire in this room are solids which will be paper and electrical. You basically need to identify part A, select the best type of fire extinguisher for paper fires. You highlight, you click in one of them boxes. B, select the best type of fire extinguisher for electrical fires, you click in that box again. So there's a possible two answers, two marks there, sorry, for this question one. There is um, a tool at the bottom there which we can click onto, which is the flag. So we can flag each question. So what Reagan had done on question one, he flagged this one, he think, right, I'll come back to that when I'm not 100% certain, so that can be flagged up. Then if we go to next, onto the second question, there's another question there for you, which is uh, one mark for this one. Then we go to next. Question three, what you need to do there, it's a two part question, two marks, describe one measure the company could use to help secure the information retained in the laptops. So again, you're thinking about safety and security of the laptop. Then if we go on to the next question, once you're happy with these, you just keep clicking on. On this one now, um, is a drop and drag box. So it says identify three hazards within the office. So basically you just highlight and then click, same there. 
When you're happy with your answers, go on to next. With this one, two questions, six marks. If you click onto the icon. Hello, my name is Mr. Myers, and I live in one of the houses which backs onto your new offices. I noticed this morning that my back garden was covered in white fibres, and I know you've been knocking down some of the old outbuildings. I'm very worried that these fibres may be asbestos, and would like someone to phone me as soon as possible. My number is 0781 488 123. For this, when you actually start the exam, um, you would be, you'd have headphones, which you'd be able to use. It's a residential area. Uh, the fibres outline the key responses of the law that would cover this situation. Think about the health and safety laws, and in this situation, what you would, what you would do, or how would you deal with this situation. Once you're happy with that, go on to next. Here we have uh, an email which has been sent by Mr. Parker. Something again for it is four marks for this question. Explain why the hole in the fence may be a security risk. Mr. Parker, he lives in one of the houses opposite the new offices, and he noticed there's a large hole uh, in the fence in the surrounds of site. So here you need to think about security and what the effects this would have on the company. Think about the materials that would be left out on site, the machinery that would be left out on site. Anybody that goes into that site could have an injury if something is moved within that site. So that's what you need to, to be thinking about um, for that particular question. When you're happy with that, go on to the next question. Sa site safety signs. Two of the signs of the site entrance have the right to be moved, give an explanation of each sign. So you need to understand and get familiar with site safety signs. Then you go next. They got a photograph there of workers working in an uncontrolled environment. Identify two types of PPE worn by the workers. That's so all you need to do is identify two items of PPE. Another two marks and question B. Explain how each item identified is a control measure. So how can we control the, the risk from this area with the use of PPE? Once you're happy with that, go on to the next. Just uh, visited our Thornbury site and have been told the HSC are visiting today for an inspection. Is there anything I need to know? So we got three marks. What does the letters H and S E stand for? So you get one mark for the, for the correct answer. Explain what may happen following an inspection by the HSE. So what we need to look for there is the laws of the health and safety executive. What powers they would have and what could they do if they turned up on site and found um, people neglecting health and safety. Once you've answered that, next. This is a renovation site in the Midlands. Name the law that covers health and, uh, health and safety of the workers within this photograph. Think about access and egress from that work area. One mark for that. Then give two responsibilities of Jim Jones and Jones under this law. So you get two marks for that. So think about the responsibilities and the law for you to answer this question. When you're happy, go to next. This one here, you get six marks and the photograph shows one of those sites delivering supplies as you can see that the site there there's lots of scaffolding on quite congested there on the side so the vans are delivering supplies we have a delivery turning up on site question a describe two potential hazards within this situation four marks part b explain a control measure that can put into place to minimize the risks to van drivers so think about the, the, the risks or what problems uh, or what could cause harm within that situation. Happy with that? Next. This is the final question on this paper. 
question 12. But this is where you gain the most marks. Uh, there are 20 marks that you can actually gain from this. So the photograph below shows a scene from a workshop. You're required to complete the risk assessment form below. Some of the form has been completed already. So look at that photograph. Think of hazards and risks within that area. Obviously there's a lot of dust around there which you can see would it be causing problems there for him to inhale in dust? The workshop looks very untidy around. There's doorways open. Dust could sort of move from that area and move out into other areas. So there's lots to think of in that particular scene from that photograph. So you scroll down. Okay, right. The first one, the fire door jammed open. So we've given the hazard, then the risk likely to be affected could lead to death. So that's the risk. Then the control measure, ensure the door is closed. There's already a sign above the door, an alarm could be fitted to warn if there has been left open for more than the time it takes to walk through. So you're controlling that measure by putting the sign above the door and an alarm. So if the alarm goes off, people are aware and it can be alerted that that is going to uh, go off so we know that that door is open. On the second part there, the hazard would be the employee. Not wearing any PPE, his clothing could get caught in equipment, he's also not wearing goggles or mask when sanding. So we've given you the hazard, given you the risk, you need to identify the control measure in that situation. Then as you go down the sawdust around the workshop, we've given the hazard again, you need to identify the risk and you need to identify the control measure. So there you can pick up eight marks, four for the risk, four for the control measure. And then at the bottom, name one other hazard. So we're looking for you to give us a hazard, a risk and a control measure within that situation from that photograph. There you would gain four, eight, ten marks for that question. So therefore, you end up creating a risk assessment linked to a real live site. You've got one hour to complete this exam, so there is plenty of time. And we have reaches out to the, the needs of all learners, and you have the, the prompts and the different icons that, that will guide you through each stage. A lot of people are quite put off by, by this e assessment, but it's been really good for us uh, as a school and uh, lots of other centres and schools that I've actually attended. It's because we've made it, made health and safety in a fun way then, if you like. It's quite engaging for the students because they're always on their phones and they're always on the com computers in schools to do a lot of the, the work in other subject areas. So this is the way we've, we've set it up to get it more, more engaging uh, for the student. My name is Hugh Cripps, I'm the head teacher at Pontypridd High School. With regard to e-assessment, it's obviously something which has to be considered as the way forward given the amount of technology now in schools and the ability for examinations to use that type of technology. I think the exams themselves, e-assessment exams, are something which can be more useful in some subjects than others. But in certain subjects where you can contextualise examples and where perhaps the nature of how the children use the technology uh, aligns itself with the assessment criteria that they've been used to. This process is already underway and there is probably no doubt that the need for more e assessment will arise uh, as the increasing use of technology uh, crosses into more and more subject areas. But all of that I think as well needs to be carefully uh, viewed and discussed at length so that when we do use technology and we do use it to assess children it's done so uh, in a way which doesn't disadvantage them. In the beginning it was very difficult to, to change from paper-based to electronic-based assessments. WGC made everything very easy to do. Our pupils prefer e-assessment to the written um, exams purely and simply because of the technology they use in their daily lives. They feel more at home um, completing tasks online than on paper. The benefits for this, from a school point of view are that e-assessment is managed by the invigilator at, at one workstation. You have the ability to, 
to alter the, the colour, the font size, the timings of the exams for pupils um, just with one click of, of a mouse. Um, every pupil is individual and the, there is a timer on the e-assessment page um, that the pupils can see how much time is running down, how much time they've got left and they can manage the time more effectively. The benefit for the pupils is they find um, e-assessment much easier than a paper-based exams. Um, they're in a smaller group, they're in smaller rooms and they're more familiar with the technology as they're using it in, in home life, in day-to-day -day in school and it, gives, it makes them feel more relaxed when they're sitting those exams online. E-assessment is completely different from paper copies as you can have video and sound for the pupils. Um, they can see diagrams which can be interactive and 3D. Um, pupils can't have this on written papers and it gives them a different aspect to the exam. As there is no paperwork um, to send off, the, there is no chance of exam papers being lost. In summary, e-assessments are a very useful tool in schools um, there is less administration needed and the, the pupils seem to adapt to it very quickly and very well and if there is a computer issue they, they complain about having to write on paper rather than doing it on the computer. In my opinion the setup and the running of the assessment in schools is a very quick and easy process. The assessment was relatively easy to set up. Um, the uh, exam boards that I've talked to, they've been very helpful and had very good support departments. And from a technical point of view, they seem to run okay, but when you do have problems, it's important that you know what the procedures are to deal with it. With the WJEC one, you're capable of running mock exams on it, which we put the pupils through, so they're experienced with using it as an exam medium. They're aware of um, what the procedure is when they come into the classroom ready for the exam. They know of what kind of questions to expect and how to expect to answer them. And you can also kind of ascertain the areas that they're particularly struggling with. Um, I think that's another key thing is that when we did run our last mock exam with them, we could tell the kids as they were leaving the room um, how well they'd done in the exam. It was something that we were instantly able to give them feedback on. They get most of their information now from screens, whether it's their phone, whether it's a tablet device or whether it's their TV. Because they're used to learning through these mediums, we have to teach them through these mediums, but I think it's also fair to examine them through these mediums because if they're not as used to absorbing information or communicating information through the written word, a traditional written word, we have to examine them in a medium that they are comfortable with. And pupil feedback on using e-assessment has generally been pretty positive. So, yeah, from my point of view, it's been pretty good. You pay more attention to a computer than the booklet or the booklet or whatever. It's much easier to concentrate. You can also flag up questions as you go along. I felt more comfortable and it was just easier and better. If you're doing it on the computer, then it's not so much writing and you don't have to like concentrate on your, like, your handwriting or just keep people calm and stand so you can just... Go on the floor. We both say yes to the assessment. assessment.